Out in the pasture, this is how we keep the animals watered. The tall buckets will get tipped over. These ones, um, as long as the ducks aren't in the pasture, these work good. If the ducks are on the pasture, <laughs> nothing works because the ducks will bathe in them. But this is the water. Um, when I first put them out to pasture, I put them on a, on a rope that has PVC on the end, right up within about four inches of their collar when I attach it. So this end goes up next to their collar, right there. And what happens is it teaches them to walk over the rope. Otherwise the rope will tangle around their legs and I'll have to come out every five minutes and unwind them, which is bad because it causes circulation problems in the animal and it, it can cause permanent damage. So we were having problems with this when we first started tethering them. So this is what I invented is you put PVC and then you put a big knot down there at the bottom so it can't travel. And we have got boulders in our ground, just huge rocks that are packed in together, like, like this. That's what underneath all this grass. The reason it looks so nice out here is because of my chop and drop. Um, this whole place was covered in rocks like this. So what I did is in the worst places, I went out and just was continually cutting right on top of the rocks. So what it did is it actually formed um, a mulch layer on top of the rocks then becomes a dirt layer that then becomes vegetation. So rather than pulling rocks out of your field or out of your garden, instead drop mulch on top of it and then as it degrades it just becomes dirt. These are what we use to tie them out with. They're super strong. They're, most of my animals don't reach 200 pounds, but these are meant for a 200 pound dog. And they pivot and you can put them in with a, I use an axe or a mallet to pound them in. They're about a foot and a half long. Uh, the spike that goes in the ground, I think they're five dollars and they are worth their weight in gold. I absolutely love them. They're hard to find when the hay is really tall. So first off I sprayed them, but then I started um, just attaching permanent ropes to them. And that way I could <clears throat> just clip the animals on quickly rather than having to tie and untie ropes. And I used twine and I just braid it uh, from hay. So I save all my twine and I braid it because ropes can get expensive and they, and they break every couple of years from being out in the UV. So I just braid ropes out of twine and save some money that way. So that is our grazing situation. Another way to make a roundabout, a twisting tie out. This is a digger link. It's about two feet long. And if you're in potato country, you already know what a digger link is. It's uh, the pointy drills that look kind of like a square with a barb on the end. What are those called? Anyway, I drilled out the middle, and I drilled out the side, and then I pounded this digger link through the middle of that one, and then I pounded it all the way to the ground so that this is actually pushing on the lid. This is really far down. If you don't get it all the way down, then the rope comes back and can get underneath that. You don't want it to be able to get underneath that. And then I just tie the rope to it, and as they move around, it just spins. And so digger links, usually around here you can get them for free. So that's a way to make a free tie out for an animal. Um, I use them for my sheep and my goats and even Jumper can't get out of this one. So it's super cheap. And then I just use the baling twine to make my ropes. That's the baling twine that's from the hay. So this is my version of mob grazing. If you have a roadway where you cannot put in um, spikes, if you have an old truck that has a hitch on it um, or these cleats on the side and we just have a whole bunch of weeds in our road that are pointy or um, have a lot of bugs in them or just is making it look untidy and I'll leave it on her, her on it for as long as it takes for her to eat it down and then what do I do? I drive the truck to the next spot. It's super nice. Um, yesterday we actually had her attached to the trailer and we were just, she graced right up to the edge of my trees and right up to the edge of my asparagus. And then I pulled the truck up and let her graze. Let's see, I don't think she actually grazed this part. Apparently she has no interest in it yet. So my rope is probably too long. If there's anything left here, it is of course mob grazing. You want them to eat everything that they can reach. 
So I probably need to shorten her up. And I just put it over the cleat. Let's see if Double she'll. Mistakes. Of course, with the white PVC, if you don't put the PVC on them, um, the only chance you really have of a, of a goat strangling is if they're next to something they can jump on that the rope will catch on. That's about the only way you're going to have anything strangled. And the other thing is you have to have a swivel clip, a, a clip that will turn both on their collar and on their uh, tether, whatever your stake is. So once you've got that, as long as you have the PVC on the line, they can't get their legs wrapped up in it, and that's the biggest danger there is, is they'll get their legs wrapped up in it and they will damage their legs. If they're sitting there long enough with that rope twisted around a leg, it, it can actually permanently damage them. So once they've been on it with the PVC pipe for a while, then you don't have to have a PVC pipe anymore. They learn to step over it instead of allowing it to twist around their legs. Like Jumper, she doesn't need a PVC pipe on it because she knows to lift her leg and step over. So the PVC pipe is just a training tool to teach them not to let their legs get wrapped up in the rope. This is our front yard. And I have needed to graze it for a little bit now. I don't like to get out the lawnmower because I've got hoses and kids toys and um, more hoses. And so I don't like to mow the lawn because it kind of interrupts our life. I have to get everybody to move everything and everybody gets cranky about it and I get cranky about it and then I still have to get out the lawnmower and do it. So I have two little tie outs and I just made the ropes out of twine. And the reason that I have covered the trees now is not because of the two does, it's because of the babies. And it's the same reason that I have electric fences. The electric fences are not for the mamas that are tied out. It's because I cannot put the babies on ropes and have them be able to get to the mom free will whenever they want to or need to. And then if babies can't get to mama when they need and want to, then they don't grow as fast and you want them to grow as fast as they possibly can, especially if they're meat animals. So I have come out and covered my trees with baby proof wire. And I need to come out and do the peach. I didn't realize I hadn't done it yet. I need to just cover the trunk. Again, if trees have their leaves eaten, um, as long as all their leaves don't get eaten, they will recover. If, however, their bark on their trunk gets girded, which means to go all the way around, it kills the tree. Little strips of bark can be taken, but if it gets taken all the way around, it'll kill it, for the, usually. Um, we do have some trees in the back that that's not the case, but they came from the roots of huge trees, and so it is kind of a different story there. Those trees will just always keep coming back because the tree roots are so strong. And can you see how they just about twisted? This is the first time they've been up here. I just I just barely got the new ropes put on. I need to make chamomile's rope just a tiny bit shorter so that they cannot cross. If they cross, they'll choke because then they'll sit and fight with each other over who was supposed to give when they cross ropes. So. Always make sure if you have your animals close to each other that their ropes cannot cross, that they can just barely meet water in the middle. And that way you only have to get water one time. It gives water to both goats. And the other thing is in order for the picket system to work, you have to have animals that can um, either, either you have to have animals that can handle being away from other animals, which goats are not those animals, or you need to have them all ga grazing close enough to each other that they don't get under stress. This is our first time bringing Varnus Diara up in the front. We have the gate at the front of the lane closed and we've shown her that that is closed. After the little goat incident, um, when we have animals out for the first time, it's what I've always done in the past and that was one of the first times I didn't do that. Whenever we have a new goat come home, I close the gate just in case there's a mishap at the car. So if, if Varnus Diara got spooked and ran down the road, she would have the visual um, block of the gate 
a horse will rarely walk over something that makes a weird noise or that presents a visual barricade, and so it should be plenty to keep her in.